Welcome to Electro Online. In this video, we're going to figure out how to find the theta unit vector. Remember, here on the three dimensional scale using spherical coordinates, we have the r vector pointing away from the origin, we have the r unit vector pointing away from the origin, then we have the phi unit vector which points around in a counterclockwise direction around the z axis. And of course, I didn't label my axes, so maybe I should do that. There's my z axis. There's my y-axis, there's my x-axis, and then we have the theta unit vector which points perpendicular to the r-vector, to the, the vector that points out to the radius of the sphere. All right, so that's the vector we're trying to find. It's a unit vector, and the way we can do that is by using the definition here that the theta unit vector is equal to the partial derivative with respect to theta of the r-vector divided, of course, by the magnitude of that, so we get the unit vector. So starting out, we have the r vector defined here in terms of the x, y, and z components. So now we're going to take the partial derivative of that with respect to theta. Okay, we have to do it one component at a time. So the partial derivative with respect to theta of the r vector is equal to. So now we take the derivative of this with respect to theta. So there's the variable. These are the constants, so they stay the same. So we have r. The derivative of the sine is the cosine, so we get the cosine of theta times, that would stay as a constant, cosine of phi. Of course, that would be in the x direction. Plus, we take the derivative of this with respect to theta, so this is the variable, these are the constants, so the derivative of the sine is also the cosine, so we get r times the cosine of theta times the sine of phi in the y direction, and then here we have the derivative of the cosine of theta becomes the negative sine, so I need to change the sine here, negative r, oh, that's a terrible looking r, times the sine of theta in the z direction. So let me try it again. There we go, much better. Okay, so now we have the partial derivative of that. Now we need to divide, divide that by the magnitude of this. So what we can do is we take the, the magnitude squared, because after all, we can say that the, let's go ahead and write it like this, so the partial derivative with, of the variable r with respect to theta, and we square that, that's simply going to be the sum of the squares of the components. Of course, we understand probably why we're doing that. So when we do that, we get the following. We get this squared, which is r squared times the cosine squared of theta times the cosine squared of phi, plus this component squared, which is r squared times the cosine squared of theta times the sine squared of phi. And then we square this component, of course, the negative becomes a positive, plus r squared, because we're squaring it, times the sine squared of theta. All right, so now when we look at those three terms, we can pull out, we can factor out an r squared, and we can factor out, let's see here, Hmm, we definitely could factor out an r squared, so let's do that. So this is equal to r squared. And then if I look at these two terms, notice I can factor out a cosine of squared of theta of these two terms right here. So let, let me do that. So we have the cosine squared of theta, and then we multiply the times what we have left here, which is the cosine squared of phi plus the sine squared of phi, like this. And then plus the r squared is factored out, so we're left with the sine squared of theta. Okay, now we realize that, of course, the cosine squared of phi plus the sine squared of phi, that's equal to 1. So this becomes equal to r squared times the cosine squared of theta times 1 plus the sine squared of theta. And, of course, that goes to 1 as well, so we're left with simply this is equal to r squared. Now, of course, if the partial, the absolute value of the partial derivative of r respect to theta squared is equal to r squared, then, of course, when we take the square root of both sides, we simply get r, which means, therefore, that theta, which is equal to the partial derivative of r with respect to theta divided by the absolute value or the magnitude of the partial derivative of r with respect to theta, respect to theta like this, is equal to now in the numerator, we're going to get this, so let's write that down. That's equal to r times the cosine of theta 
times the cosine of phi in the x direction. Then we have plus r times the cosine of theta sine of phi in the y direction. And then minus r times the sine of theta in the z direction. Like this part like that. And of course we're going to divide that by the magnitude of that which is simply equal to r. And then you can see that all the r's cancel out, and so we're left, oh, this is a theta unit vector, and so then when we do that, we get the theta unit vector is equal to the cosine of theta cosine of phi in the x direction, plus the cosine of theta sine of phi in the y direction, minus the sine of theta in the z direction. And that is how we can derive, kind of interestingly, in an interesting method, the unit vector theta. That is how it's done. It's kind of fun, especially when everything cancels out.